How many of us are living a life wishing that we had done something? I grew up in a very tough neighborhood. There were drugs, there was violence. And so I saw a lot growing up. I mean, even in my own house. I will never forget from which I have come. I will never forget that my mother had to work three jobs. I know the struggles. I know the pain. I know the impact it has upon children. All of those experiences are part of who I am and shape how I work with people. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Philadelphia is home. On Sunday mornings, I'm able to inspire people and to tell them you can do it. But Monday through Friday, I'm actually able to help people make those dreams become a reality through job training, through job placement, and also through education and economic empowerment. The lives that have been transformed, the families that have been restored, the youth who have seen their parents get their dignity back. I'm so excited about the work that we've done but I still see the poverty. I still see the homelessness. I still see people who are struggling. I still see the mothers who are waiting on the bus stop trying to catch the trolley, trying to make ends meet for their families. I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm able to help that mother. I'm not gonna be satisfied until I'm able to help that father. I'm not gonna be able to be satisfied until I help that child because the reality is that could have been me. to imagine for the first time in September came to visit with my girlfriend and my godson and when pastor asked us you know if anyone wanted to join I feel like God was just giving me a nudge to say you know get on up there girl get on up there I've been a faithful member ever since and I, I love it I love the family um, vibe that the church has <laughs> My family started visiting with me, first my niece, then she joined um, shortly after my sister, my nephew. Um, recently, my mother passed away and we were able to have a um, funeral here and it was just such a blessing. Pastor KJ and um, the members of uh, Dare to Imagine embraced us and it was just, it was wonderful. And I just, I love, I love, I love being a member of Dare to Imagine. Here to imagine, God, we ask now that you be with us, God, as we seek to continue to bless others, and God, to do your will. We support D2I. We support Dare to Imagine. We support D2I. When we met with uh, Pastor Johnson, when you guys were trying to get the church, and he painted his vision back then, and I just see constant progression. I just want to be here to support it. Took some time off from work just to support the church. Back on my feet, just a man and his will to survive. 6610 Anderson, Anderson Street. My vote is yes for both the variants and the special exception. Yeah. 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 While we won, we praise God for the day. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to look back on this day and say, look at what the Lord did. Yeah. I believe that the community will continue to flourish as Dare to Imagine as we are the hub and the heart for education, workforce, and leadership. Life is better when you want to be. Dare to imagine today. Thank you. Can I All right. you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, we want to help you out with a couple of those turkeys. So okay. we're going to give you this $50 gift card. Are you serious? I'm serious. It's a heart attack. Now, <laughs> <laughs> right, tell me your name. Nadira. Nadira. What are y'all going to do for Thanksgiving? I don't know. It's been rough this week. 
Oh, okay. He, I just, he just lost his dad. He just lost his daddy? What happened? He got killed. He got killed? How long uh, ago? When? Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Last Tuesday? Wow. Show that he is awesome. He is almighty. He is all powerful. If you're excited about that, why don't you clap your hands with me this morning? Come on, let's stand to our feet and worship God. Yes, you are. Repeat after me. Let's try this. Almighty, Almighty incredible, incredible, amazing, amazing supernatural, supernatural, wonderful, wonderful marvelous. marvelous he is, he is. He is. Almighty, Almighty, incredible, incredible amazing, amazing, supernatural, supernatural wonderful, wonderful, marvelous. marvelous. He Yeah. 
Jesus. There are so many things that we could call you, Lord, for you are great and there's no one like you on this earth. If we could just all just take some time to tell Jesus who he is. The worship team, we just had this exercise where we just, we just said who God is to us. And if he's your, if he is that peace giver, if he is that comforter, if he is your strength, let's just take that time to worship and declare who he is, not because of what he's done, just because of who he is. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship, and we bless your holy name, Minister Eric. For you are great, you, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. There is no Jesus, say you deserve, you deserve the glory, and the honor, and the honor, we lift our hands, Lord, we lift our hands in worship, and we bless your name. And we bless. 
someone else like him. <laughs> He's an awesome God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we, were, we serve the risen Savior. Oh, God, we thank you this morning, God. Lord, you said that you would give us life and life eternally when we turn our life over to you, God. Father, we thank you for salvation, God. We thank you for the gift that you've given to us. We didn't get it. We couldn't go after it. You drew us by your spirit. And so, Father, we're thanking you this morning, God, for how you just brought us here safely. Father, we thank you for your angels that protect us, God, from seen and unseen dangers, God. We're thanking you for healing, God. Lord, you have a healing virtue, God. Father, you said by your stripes we are healed. And so, Father, we're asking that you go into the hospital rooms, into the sick room in the homes, God. Lord, touch God, set free and deliver. God, I know you personally to be a healer. God, you healed me of heart problem at 29 years of age, God. Lord, the doctor said I was going to die. You said I shall live. And so, Father, I thank you. I stand as a testimony of your goodness, God. So, Father, I thank you, God, because I know what you can do. And so, Father, we're asking that you touch those who are having some emotional issues, God. They're concerned, God. Depression, God. It's real. God, but we're asking, oh, God, that you would lift it, God, even right now. We have babies who've been sick, others who've been sick, God. Lord, but you just healed them, and we're just so grateful to you. Father, continue to touch our pastor. We thank you, Lord, so much for him. Continue to use him to your glory. Touch his wife, God, who always stands behind his stead, God. Touch the children, God, who share their father with us. And so, Father, we're asking that you touch everybody under the sound of my voice and give them all they stand in need of. God, we're thanking you for everything that you've done for us in the past. We're thanking you for what you're doing right now. And we're thanking you, God, in advance for what you will do in the future. God, we owe everything to you, God. Yes, God. There's none like you, and we're so grateful. In Jesus the Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Lanice Williams Green, and I'm a proud member of Dare to Imagine Church. Woo! There are so many things I love about this church, from our pastor and his family, to the kids zone where my son goes every Sunday, to the coffee. And one of the favorite things I like is I'm an avid social media user, and as D2I, we believe in being a social church. So we encourage you to take out your flip phone, your smartphone, your tablet, your message in a bottle, your carrier pigeon, Morse code, whatever it is that you use to communicate and let everyone know that you are here worshiping with the Dare to Imagine Church family. You can follow us on all the platforms that are listed on the screen and it's real easy to find us. You can do at D2I Church and be sure to tag us in any sermon notes that you tweet out, pictures, things of that nature. Do we have any first time visitors? If yes, please stand. Amen. We are so excited that you have decided to join us in worship this morning. If you did not receive a connection card and it looks like this, please raise your hand and the people in the yellow shirts will pass one out to you. And we just need you to complete the front as well as the back of that card and take it to the welcome table, which is right outside these doors here. And we prepared a, spe a special gift just for you. So D2Y, let's be sure to wave to those who are watching us on the live stream. Hey, y'all. And let's stand up and greet our guests as well as each other while listening to some awesome music.
Amen. Let the people of God say amen. How many of you are glad to be in God's house? Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. We thank God so much for your presence here this Lord's Day. Uh, we are beyond excited about this particular day because it gives us an opportunity, one, uh, to remember those who have lost their lives to uh, breast cancer. And if you are a breast cancer survivor, will you please stand so that we might recognize you? We have on pink uh, to honor you today. Amen. All of those who are survivors, praise God. Come on, give them a round of applause. We thank God for them. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. So thankful to God for each and every one of you. I see you, George. You got on your pink tie and everything. Amen. I see you. Um, but also because this is um, a very much so for us a focus on health, uh, God's really placed upon my heart uh, that we would um, do something around gift of life. And many of you know that last Sunday uh, I had to go down to Texas to preach at my home church. And I was there at David Chapel Mission Baptist Church, and my pastor was celebrating his 27th pastoral anniversary. That is a blessing. Amen. I want to be able to pastor that long, too. Amen. As long as y'all don't kill me. I'm just joking. Amen. Just joking. Just joking. I love Dare to Imagine, the most loving congregation. But while I was there, I could not help but to think about uh, the health challenges that my home pastor has had. Um, he preached for my birthday earlier this year. He's going to be back in February uh, 2020. But he had a heart transplant. And I never will forget uh, going to Texas to see him there at the hospital. And he could tell me that the moment when his heart was going to stop. And because of the advancement in technology, um, they would give his heart a shock. And literally when they gave his heart a shock, his body leaped off the bed. And they would sometimes have to shock his heart at least two or three times. And, and he was telling me, don't be afraid, I'm gonna be okay, it's gonna be over. And shock him again, his body would leap off the bed. And the reason why he is still here is because someone blessed him with a heart. Amen. Someone blessed him with, with a heart. And uh, he did not know who the person was, obviously. And later on, he had a chance to, to meet the family. And the family said to Pastor Parker that we are so thankful that our son's heart is in somebody else's body who has a heart for God. And... I share that with you because I've been an organ donor really since I was able to get my driver's license, you know. I kind of have this thing that, you know, when I die, you know, I want to be cremated. Kimi said, look, uh, we ain't going to cremate you. We're going to have your funeral and your casket. We're going to ride all around the world. Amen. I said, no, save that money. Amen. Cremate me and go on about your business. But I have, and I kind of joke about that because for me, I want my body to be used um, when that time comes um, so that it can be a blessing to somebody else. And so today, I am so thankful uh, to God. Um, I have known Teresa uh, for a very long time. Amen. Uh, I've been your pastor now for how long? I guess about 15, 14, 15 years. 14, 15 years. And Teresa has um, always had some heart kind of challenges, but you wouldn't know because she loves Jesus so much. And sometimes you ask yourself, if you love Jesus that much, then, then, then how can you have health challenges? And I remember seeing you uh, when I served as pastor of another church some years ago in the hospital, and I just thought you were just going through a regular procedure. I mean, so kind of share with us your, your journey, and we're gonna get around to the, the, the transplant, but kind of share with us your journey. How did you know that you had an issue with your heart? I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I was driving to work one day and um, I was, I couldn't breathe and I turned my car around and I went to the hospital and when I got to the hospital, the um, doctors told me that my mitral valve wasn't pumping blood through my body like it should. It actually didn't work at all. So they asked me if, um, they told me I'd need to have um, surgery to have a um, prosthesis put in, either a cow valve or a pig valve. 
and I didn't believe him. I said, nope, nothing's wrong with me. And they said I'd get another opinion. However, if I didn't get it done, I would need a heart, and I needed sooner than later. And what year was that for you? 2005. 2005, and so you had the heart transplant last year. I had it last year. And so that's about 13 years. 13 years. And so kind of share with us um, what, uh, there was a journey, obviously, to get to the point of having a heart transplant. So you realized that you couldn't breathe. Um, what were some of the steps that you kind of took uh, to kind of make sure that you um, prepared yourself for what eventually would be inevitable? prayed a lot, <laughs> and my faith increased, and I would walk into my doctor's office, and they would always say, Teresa, we're so amazed. You shouldn't be doing the things you do. Mm -hmm. People are less sick than you, and they can't do what you do, and my comment was to them was, you don't know who I serve. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any idea who I serve, because I knew that no matter what I went through, my favorite scripture's always been, and I never knew that was, I would need it so much, was Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purpose. So never when I went through, I said, Lord, I have no control over what you're, what you're allowing, but please help me to accept what you allow, because it's going to work for my good. Yeah. Amen. And um, I remember, because um, everything happened so quickly, and many times when uh, you are a candidate uh, for organ donation, they have these different levels. And so um, talk about the different levels and then we'll talk about uh, the night of. Okay, there are different levels. They changed the program now, so you have a one through a seven. And I was on the bottom of the list because I didn't need a heart, but I was on it just in case. And when I went to the hospital on October 25th, I went in for them to, you know, give me an, um, a, a pill or IV to get the fluid off me. And when they went in to do a right heart cath, they realized that my heart wasn't pumping. So they decided they need to give me a pick line, put a pick line in. And I went in on the <clears throat> 26th, they told me that I was gonna be moved up onto the heart transplant list to number four. And I kept thinking, well, number four isn't bad. It's, you know, I'm not a number one or number two. So I came, Lord, it's all right, it's all good. And um, I asked them, I said, well, what, how long will I have to wait for a heart if I need it? And they said, you'd need to wait. It could be two years, four years, it all depends. And I said, okay. And they said, if your heart goes bad, then we're gonna put this AVAC in you. It's a mechanical thing, and you wear it outside, and you have to change the batteries every 12 hours, and you have two batteries. And I said, Lord, I don't want that. <laughs> and so um, what they did is, um, Sister Janet came up and prayed with me one, on Tuesday, that Tuesday the 20, I think the 30th it was, and we prayed, we prayed that, Lord, we want to pray for um, a healthy, a, a, a young heart. <clears throat> and she left at 2.30. At 2.35, the doctors came in and said, we got a heart for you. So I waited four days for a heart. Not two years, Amen. not four years, but four days. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And um, I remember Mike calling me and uh, just before uh, I got there just in time because whenever you – you're blessed with the heart, like everything moves quickly. And so made my way over to Temple uh, Hospital and uh, we had prayer yes. and I can still see to this, I did not know it was in October of last year. Wow, isn't that something? And here we are talking about gift of life. And I remember praying with you and, and the whole medical team, I mean, Teresa was still witnessing that she's getting ready to go get a new heart. Uh, she's saying, I wanna see you in church on tomorrow. I wanna see you in church on tomorrow. Um, but that's just her spirit, and uh, here it is now, a year later, uh, God has blessed you with a heart. What would you say to those who are here and those who are watching via live stream about the importance of organ donation? It's so important because so many people die waiting for a heart. I was one of the blessed ones because God was in my life and he saw fit to give me one early. But so many people die because there aren't enough donors out there. We have transplants that are so successful now, but the people aren't donating, so they wind up dying. So it's imperative that you, you give or you donate your parts after you die and realize that the doctors are gonna do everything they can to save you. People believe that if they become a donor that they're not gonna take care of them, but they're gonna give 100%. But they don't realize the medical team working on you is gonna be different from the medical team that's coming to take your, don take your, don your, 
your um, organs. organs. So please, please, please become, give, give, give to the gift of life. We, we need it, we appreciate it, and it's a, it's a gift. It's your last generosity mm. that you give, your love and generosity that you're giving, the last thing you can do. So please give to the gift of life. And last thing, I'm pretty sure they got some pictures up on the screen. And so uh, Teresa and, and Mike, uh, who's over there uh, videotaping uh, his lovely wife, um, I married you all. Yes, you did. <laughs> at 3801. And uh, I never will forget um, just watching them, uh, you know, being married and not knowing. And then, Mike, I just want to say to you, brother, um, that God chose you as Teresa's angel. And Teresa, God chose you as his faith angel yes. because I've seen so much growth in them. Come on, let's give God some praise today for Teresa Coger Alexander. This is what faith looks like. Come on, let's bless God today. We ought to stand up on our feet and thank God for giving Teresa life. morning. And so after worship service today, um, we have downstairs where you can sign up and you can uh, become an organ donor. Uh, it doesn't mean anything's going to happen to you. Trust me. I've been an organ donor since I was 18 years old. I'm 45. Amen. Amen. But it does mean if something were to happen uh, that you could be, and I like the way Teresa said it, it is uh, your act of generosity. And so we're going to prepare now, uh, beloved, I'm going to ask now for them to go ahead and clear off the stage here. And as we make this transition, um, I want to just kind of share with you just a couple things. Um, coming up on the uh, first Sunday in November, I am going to be sharing with you uh, where the Lord is not only just taking us, we are coming up on our fifth anniversary here at Dare to Imagine Church. And I am beyond excited, as you are beyond excited, what the Lord is going to be doing and we are, I'm going to be sharing a little bit more at that time, but we really have a goal this year uh, to hit a million dollars. And I am just crazy enough to believe that the Lord is going to allow for us to do it. Our first year, God blessed us, and this is unheard of for a new church plant. We were able to raise around $360,000, $365,000. Our second year, we did five thirty-five. dollars Our third year, we did around $980,000 because that was the year we had the capital campaign in which we raised a lot of money to buy this property. And then last year, and I'll just go ahead and say it, um, I did some stupid decide to run for Congress because I don't want to trust God totally. And we took a hit and we dropped down from 989 to around, say, $600,000 for the year of 2018. But as God has it this year, as we concluded our third, the third quarter, the first nine months of the year, we are now at $641,000. Amen. So we praise God for that. So that means we have three months left, and I'm just crazy enough to believe that we're going to close out these last three months and so that we can begin to take the church to the next level. And so what I'm asking for you to do is that we show you the impact that we do here. We're we giving out coats here right after worship service today uh, to kids who need coats, and, and there may be some people who you know, so we want to make sure that you take coats to them. But we do things all the time. We're getting ready for our Thanksgiving blessing when we're going to go to the grocery store and buy groceries for people on Thanksgiving. Uh, you know what we do on every fourth Monday. We go to Chosen 300, and we feed the homeless. I mean, I could just go on and on and on backpack giveaways, scholarships that we give away. I could just keep going on and on and on. Then there are people who need help with benevolence and help paying bills. We just continuously give. But I am asking for you, to beloved, today to begin to really dig deep because the reality is there are only about 144 people here uh, who are really carrying this church. Their gifts range from 1000 all the way up to, say, $30,000. But there are about uh, 800 of us who have not really stepped up to the plate. And so I want us, in the words of Andrew Gillen, I want us to bring it home. And I was at this event for Morehouse College the other day, and Oprah, she was talking to the students there at Morehouse, and uh, she was saying, you know, getting the first billion was the hardest. And I said to myself, we're just trying to get the first million. Amen. 
And the statistics say that once you get, once a church breaks the million dollar mark, to get to the other levels is going to be beyond easy. And I want you to know, God's already placed upon my heart, this is not our sanctuary. This is actually a gymnasium. Uh, this whole facility is actually uh, the school that was once here for the Catholic Church. And, you know, we have great dreams for this congregation. We have gr great dreams the Lord is going to do. And we really want to make sure that we are taking care not only of this temple, but we are making sure that we reach out uh, to all of those who come in contact with Dare to Imagine Church. And so I am beyond excited what the Lord is about to do here, but we need your help to do it. We need your help to continue to bless people. We need your help to continue to take this ministry to the next level. And so I'm asking for you today, if you have not, don't worry about some people. They say, well, pastor, you know, I, I, I'm trying to start, but, but I'm, I'm so far behind. Forget about the past. Touch somebody and tell them, forget about the past. Forget about the past. And say, start right now. And so I want you to start right now and try in God. I want you to start right now having crazy faith because we're preaching this sermon series and God says that where your what treasure is, what your heart will be also. And so as we continue this sermon series on crazy faith, I want each of you to begin to step out on faith like you've never stepped out on faith before. And see, what I know about Teresa, Teresa is a giver, not just um, and, and just her prayers and being with people, but she's a financial giver too. And I'm just, I just know that God blessed her the way that he did because she's been so faithful in so many areas of her life. And I want you to know that when you begin to try God, God's going to bless you in such ways that, that, that you won't even know. And if you're watching us, on Facebook Live and, and live stream. You've been blessed by the ministry. It costs to provide this service. And I need for you, if you're watching right now, to go to PushPay. And all you got to do is to text 77977 uh, D2I Church app. And you can download the link there. And then you'll be able to give uh, via our app. But it's now time for us to have crazy faith. Somebody say crazy faith. Come on. It's now time for us to have crazy faith. If you believe God can do the impossible, touch somebody right now and tell them it's now time to have what? Crazy faith. We're going to ask now that you get ready to give. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and one of our ushers will be glad to give you one at this time. Ushers, please begin to make your way around. But I really encourage you to give the way the pastor gives and that is via push pay. And all you got to do is a text uh, D2I Church to 77977 uh, D2I Church app to 77977. You'll get the link and download the app to your phone and give right there, the little heart button right there so that we can begin Begin to bless God like never before. I, uh, I can't wait till the end of this year because I just got enough crazy faith to believe that this is going to be the year that Dare to Imagine Church is going to break the million dollar mark so we can get ready to take Dare to Imagine to the next level. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Come on, music ministry. One thing remains. 
people of God, come on, let's go ahead and stand and we thank God for these gifts. God, we thank you now. We thank you for these gifts. We thank you, oh God, for every giver. And God, we thank you, God, for those today, God, who stepped out on faith, God. They didn't look back, God. They looked forward. And God, they began to try you like never before. God, I'm praying right now, God, for a mighty increase over their lives. And God, I'm praying right now for a mighty increase for everyone in here, oh God, who steps out on faith. God, whatever they have been given in the past, God, you are calling for them, God, now to have crazy faith. And God, for them to trust you with their finances because, God, you want us to be stewards over what you've already given to us. And God, as they trust you, God, I'm just crazy enough to believe that you are going to bless them beyond measure. Yes. We ask now, oh God, for an increase in their lives. God, as they increase their trust and faith in you, God, through their stewardship. It's in your name we pray, oh God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many dare to have crazy faith this morning? Say, Lord, help my unbelief, Jesus. Lord, help me to step out on faith. Lord, help me to trust in you because I've seen you be a way maker before. So I know you're going to make ways out of no way again. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? Yeah. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith, you know best, and nothing can catch you by surprise. You.
Let the church say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on and give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm glad to be here. And God, we thank you today. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done and all that you will do. God, we pray now, God, for your spirit upon this service and God upon this series called Crazy Faith. It's in your name we pray and we bless your name. Amen. 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 I want to thank my brother Keith Pelzer for preaching last week and thank Minister Tanya as well. I was cracking up because some of y'all, y'all um, watched Dare to Imagine service and then somehow y'all were able to tune in and watch the service there in Texas. So y'all got two sermons last week. Amen. Uh, thank God so much for technology and for what the Lord is doing. Also on the third, fourth, excuse me, the first Sunday in November, I'm going to be sharing with you about our trip to Elevation uh, Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was beyond amazing, 
and we learned so much from that trip and we took about 12 people down to that conference and it was great. I'm also excited about what God's about to do here as it relates to the launch of small groups. I've been meeting now all of those who are part of the small group, what we're calling I groups here at Dare to Imagine. If you'll please stand, if you're serving on this committee and you've been meeting with the pastor every Thursday, will you please stand just so the people can see you? Uh, amen. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. They have been beyond dedicated uh, to this, and we're excited about launching what we're calling I group, I, the small I meaning for imagine, I imagine groups, but I groups, and so I'm excited about it. Uh, we're going to have these smaller communities for men, for women, for children, for different interest groups. If you run, if you cook, Wallace Weaver, he normally comes to the second service, but Wallace already has his group that he wants, and that's the fitness group. And uh, so we're just going to have a great time, but it's just it's so exciting to see what the Lord is about to do here at Dare to Imagine Church. And so we've been meeting now for about the past uh, three or four weeks, and we'll continue to meet throughout uh, because we're getting ready to launch and to share this with you coming up in the new year. Last thing I want to share with you, beloved, is that be looking for an email from me. Uh, just kind of letting you know uh, where you stand as it relates to the first nine months and then so we can begin to close out uh, this year as it relates to trying to hit this million dollar mark. There's a word from the Lord today. If you don't mind turning with me to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Not going to be long this morning because I wanted to make sure we had enough time for Teresa and to share her testimony. And we have a panel discussion right after this. And I also just want to share with you today um, that later this week we will be having the tree, trunk or treat that will take place on Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. And also, please, please sign up for Dare to Imagine Your Career. The new cohort starts on November 2nd at 8.30 a.m. And you can go to the church's app and sign up or go to the church's website to sign up as well. Matthew 8, begin at verse 5, listen to what the word of God says. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? I want you to see what Jesus said. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Y'all don't mind me paraphrasing this for Jesus a little bit. Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such crazy faith. And then Jesus says there in verse 13, to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it, and his servant was healed at that moment. Touch somebody and tell them this is what faith looks like. That's what I want to preach about today. This is what faith looks like. Beloved, I am beyond convinced that there are so many of us who are here today that we have a misunderstanding of what faith looks like. For many of us, our understanding of faith, it has to do with the fact that, yes, there is this God, and yes, God blesses. But beyond that kind of surface understanding, there is not really a true understanding of what faith really is. You see, for many of us, we know that there is a God. We believe and we know that there is one who created this world. And we believe it because we can see it. 
We see the manifestations of God. We see the sun. We see the stars. We understand that there is a world that revolves around on its axis. Yes, we see what the Lord has done. We see people like Teresa Alexander. We see the miracles that he has performed. But I'm talking about do we really have faith? Because for many of us, when we think about faith, we think about what we already see. We think about what we already know. But I'm here today to tell you today, beloved, that when we think about faith, we cannot think about faith based upon what we see. Because faith by its mere definition does not mean that you will ever see it, but that you believe that God can do it and that you know that even if he doesn't do it, I still know that he has the power to. Yes, faith is something that is totally different than what you and I have ever really began to fully understand. There are so many of us, we come to church and we have faith based upon what we have seen. But I'm here to tell you today that you don't have to have that, to have faith. You don't have to see it. You just have to believe it. And it's here, it's here when we begin to look in this text that we come in contact with this man who is a Roman centurion. A centurion was a military officer, was someone who had power and had control of at least about a hundred soldiers. Yes, this centurion who was not someone who was of the Jewish faith, not someone who practiced uh, Judaism. No, this was a man who was a Roman soldier. He was just an everyday person. In fact, he was just someone who had enough sense to realize that there were some things that were beyond his control. You see, what I like about this Roman centurion is the fact that this Roman centurion that he came to the point in his life when he realized even though he had the power that he was limited in the power that he has and see that what's wrong with some of us is that we think that we have all power and we fail to understand that we don't have all power God has all the power yes you and I we continue to make mistakes in our lives because we try to act on God's behalf that's why we get into some the situations that we get in because we're trying to be God but if you just step aside and let God be God then maybe the situations that you're in will not be as bad as they have been because you keep messing it up touch somebody right now tell them pastor's preaching to me Yes, if you're really honest with yourself, some of the reasons that you have messed up and that you and I have made mistakes, the reason why we took a dip last year financially is because I did not want to trust God. I did not want to step out on faith. I did not want to leave a place of security to come to a place that I did not know. And God has a way of reminding you that you are only here because I put you here. Oh, I wish I had a witness here today. That's why I can sit up here and begin to trust God like I've never trusted him before. You see, God said, okay, you're not going to do what I want you to do. Then I'm going to make it such and such a place that you are going to have to rely solely on me. And if you trust me, God says that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you should not have room enough to receive it. Yes, I'm clear. I'm clear. We went from 365 to 535 to 989. Then we dropped down to 600 all because your pastor did not have crazy faith. Here it is. I'm the pastor of Dare to Imagine, but I don't have faith. Had enough faith to get the property, but God says if you're going to keep it, you got to keep having that Dare to Imagine. Faith. So all of us, all of us, including your pastor, struggle with the fact of really trusting God. Because in the human eye, God, how is it going to be done? God, how are you going to provide? God, how are you going to take care of me? And what I love about this text is that this centurion didn't have crazy faith for himself. (laughs) But he had crazy faith (laughs) for somebody else. (laughs) You see, some of us, can I go ahead and give it to you? Some of us can only have crazy faith when it relates to us. 
But this centurion, this Roman soldier, he had crazy faith for somebody else. Listen to what the text says here. It says, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said. Now, you got to understand how the Bible kind of works. It's because whenever you see in the Bible the capital L in Lord, that means that somebody recognizes Jesus as the one who is Lord of Lords. Whenever you see the Lord case, Lord, they had a way of speaking to people. Lord was like saying, you know, like in, in British culture, they, they call people Lord. But when you see the capital L, it means that the soldier recognized Jesus for who he was, even though he was not a follower of Jesus. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here today. You see, sometimes God can use people who know more about him than people who have been with him. And what I love about this text is is that this soldier says, Lord, he says to him, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Yes, he understood that his power was limited. He understood that, yes, he was a soldier, but he did not have everything that he needed. And he says to Jesus, he says, Lord, he's lying there. He's paralyzed. He's suffering terribly. And Jesus even though he didn't ask, Jesus says, what? Shall I come and heal him? Now, you ought to shout right there. That's why I got issues with pastors who are so high and mighty that they come, cannot go and make hospital visits. <laughs> that they can't pick up the phone and call and pray with their members. Amen? Amen. I'm looking at many of you right now. You've told me that you were sick and I called and I, I prayed with you. I came to the hospital. And the reason why I do it is because if Jesus can make house calls, then nobody else is exempt from making house calls too. Yes, Jesus said, shall I come and heal him? Now, you got to understand that Jesus was on this path, how he was healing people, how he was restoring people, how he was giving people new life. And here it is in this text. He asked the question. He says, shall I come and shall I heal him? But then the centurion says something that, that messes me up. He says, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word. Oh, I wish I had some shouters in here today. He says, just Say the word. He said, if you just speak it, God, uh, my servant will be healed. Uh, if you just declare it, God, uh, I know that it will happen. And I'm speaking to somebody here today that you're going to be healed because the word is going forward. That God's going to bless you in your life because the word is going forward. The word says, say it, God. And if you say it, Lord, then I know that it's going to come to pass. You see, what I've come to understand about some of us is that we can't say the word because we don't know what the word really says. But when you and I know what the word really says, there are some things in our lives that we can speak into existence. We can speak life. We can speak joy. We can speak restoration. We can speak healing. Oh, you ought to be standing on your feet right now speaking things into existence and thanking God for what God's about to do in your life. Just say what the word he says just say the word Siobhan <laughs> just say the word Teresa <laughs> just say the word watch God begin to heal. Three things I'm going to give you and I'm done. The first is, thank you God. Faith does not need to be understood. Faith does not need to be understood. 
Correct that for me, vessel, please. You see, when you and I look at faith, you and I do not need to understand it. What I would challenge is, is that we want to understand, God, how are you going to do this? God, how are you going to make it happen? God, how are you going to bring it to pass? And see, the reason why God had to kind of work with me and why I did not fully trust him is because I know what it is that was needed to, to stay married to Kim. You know, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. She's going to kill me later. <laughs> Amen. No, but seriously, I know I'm a man. Can I just be real with y'all? I got a wife. I got three kids. And I'm a man. And God, and I was like, God, listen, I, I know. And, and God says, I know. But he says, are you going to trust me? You see, we try to figure out the how. Don't you realize that Teresa's testimony, if Teresa kept trying to figure out the how, she would have never have gotten a heart in the first place? Are y'all listening to me today? You see, it's not until you fully trust God. It's not until you totally say, I surrender all to him. It's not until you finally take your hands off of the will that God can be do, begin to do what God does best. And that is be God. It's not until you say, God, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. It's not until you say, God, I'm going to trust you like I've never trusted you before. It's not until you finally put your hand in God's hand and begin begin to trust God like you never had before that God begins to open up the doors in your life touch somebody right now tell them you got to trust him yes we try to understand how God's going to do it but that's something else you got to understand is that faith does not need to see it this man in this text Jesus wanted to pay him a house visit. Jesus said, look, I'll come to the house and I'll heal your servant. And this, and this centurion was like, I don't need all that. <laughs> and, you know, if the truth is really told, we don't really want Jesus to come to our house anyway. <laughs> If Jesus said right now, I want you to, I want to come to your house, be like, come on, God, I, I, you can come by tomorrow. We, we got to go clean up stuff and get things together. Don't you see the centurion right now? I mean, this centurion, he's like, look, you ain't got to come to my house. You ain't got to be in my business like that. I just need you to say the word. And see, what I love about the centurion is that the centurion did not need to see Jesus physically touching the, the man that needed to be healed. He did not need to see Jesus touching his servant. He just needed to know that God was willing to say the word. And I want you to know, beloved, that's what faith looks like. You cannot fully understand what the Lord's about to do in your life until you begin to see that all oh God God has to do is say the word. <laughs> then there's this third thing, and I promise you I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. It just really blessed my soul, this third point the Lord gave me. <laughs> is that when you look at this text, it's not just you don't have to see it, you don't have to understand it. But faith is the extraordinary belief <laughs> in an extraordinary God. <laughs> Touch somebody and tell them that faith is extraordinary belief in an extraordinary God. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and close this thing out now. You see, when you look back over your life, is that there are just some things that are beyond your control. There are some things that are designed just for God. You see, what I've come to understand in my life is that there are some problems I've faced in my life 
that Kevin cannot fix. There are some challenges that God has allowed to come my way. Not because God wanted me to fix them, but because God wanted to fix them and to remind me that he is God all by himself. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here today. And that's why you ought to get excited whenever you got a problem that you can't fix. That's why you ought to get excited whenever you got a challenge that you can't solve. It's because that problem, that challenge is really a candidate for what the Lord is about to do in your life. Uh, you see, faith is extraordinary belief uh, in an extraordinary God. Uh, I remember somebody said, it's not just extraordinary, but when you look at it, it's extraordinary. You see, you and I operate on the ordinary level, but our God operates on the extraordinary level. You see, give somebody a high five and tell them, I know my God can do it. Uh, you see, when you look at the Bible, all God Jesus had to do was just say the word. The man who had the withered hand, all Jesus said was stretch out your hand. The man who had uh, eyes that were blind, Jesus took some spit and mixed it with some mud and put it on his eyes and said, go and wash uh, your eyes and you will see. Uh, I want somebody to know that the God that we serve, all he has to do is say the word. Uh, you see, what I love about God, uh, what God does for us uh, is that God reminds us uh, that I don't have to go through all of these steps to make things happen. I know some of y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy but let me go ahead and be Bible here today. When God created the world um, he didn't sit up here and go into a laboratory. He didn't sit up here and try to fix it and work it out. All God said was let there be light and there was light. Uh, have I got a witness in here today? He said, let there be uh, birds uh, and there were birds. Uh, let there be animals uh, and there were animals. Uh, he said, let us make man uh, and there was man. Uh, I want you to know all God has to do is to do what? Say the word uh, and you and I ought to have crazy faith uh, that if God can do it for somebody else, uh, then God ought to be able to do it for me. Uh, Give somebody a high five and tell them, I got crazy faith. I'm, I'm believing right now that God's going to work it out for my good. I, I got crazy faith. I, I don't know how God's going to do it, but I got crazy faith. I, I don't know how God's going to work it out, I, but I got crazy. I said crazy. I said crazy. I said crazy faith. I, come on and give God some praise today. Bless his holy name. Is there anybody who has crazy faith? That's what faith looks like when you get to the point in your life when he doesn't have to come to your house. But all he has to do is say the word. He doesn't have to be with you there in chemotherapy. <laughs> he doesn't have to be with you there in a the hospital room. But all he has to do is to do what? Say the word. There's somebody here today as we stand our feet. You've been mad. You've been upset with God. Maybe even been upset with me as the pastor because I can't as we continue to grow I'm not going to be able to get to everybody as much as I want to it's my heart to be but my Bible teaches me if I can just what say the word and that's the type of crazy faith that God's looking for is for people who believe that if God can just say it, then I know he's going to work it out for me. It's time for you to have that kind of faith because that's what faith looks like. It's crazy. It makes no sense. 
God's speaking to somebody here today. And it's inviting you to come now to be a part of this community. To continue your walk with God. Because God wants you to have that crazy faith. So that you can tell folk this is what faith looks like. The doors of the church are open. Why don't you come today?